All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started as people trickle into the room. Again, please feel free to use that chat feature that we have in the room. Leave your name, uh, what area you are advocating for and where you're from, just so we know who we're talking to. I am Kristen. I am the Patient Leader Network Coordinator here at WeGo Health. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We are very excited because for this Patient Leader webinar, we're having a Patient Leader panel. So as you can see, um, we're focusing on Instagram tonight, which is definitely an up and coming, ever so addicting um, platform that I'm sure we're all either interested in or learning more or getting on, or maybe you have all these followers already and you're just looking how to engage with them more. We'll be talking with three patient leaders tonight more about that. Uh, these three patient leaders are absolutely rocking Instagram. I definitely would advise you to go check them all out tonight. We will be providing you with their links and we're also going to be providing you with a tip sheet of all the tips you'll be seeing here tonight. So don't get a cramp writing this all down. Not only will we be posting it on the blog, we will be providing a full tip sheet of all the Instagram insights that we have for you tonight. So without further ado, I wanna jump into our three stars for the night. We have Rachel, Paige, and Marla here, which are all patient leaders within the Patient Leader Network, who, like I said, they are really taking Instagram by storm and making the most of the platform to really get their advocacy message out there. So now I want to jump into quick intros of everyone just so you can learn a bit about each of them, and then we're going to jump into some questions. But throughout the webinar, if you guys have any questions, just again, use that chat feature in the box to um, shoot across any questions you might have for the hosts um, and we'll get those answered. So uh, Rachel, could you pop in and tell us a bit about you and your advocacy journey and um, you know your, your experience as a lupus patient leader? Awesome, thank you. Um, thank you for everyone for tuning in today. Um, my name is Raquel Dozier and I have lupus and I own a corporation called Lupus in Color where we help people deal with lupus, inspire, um, encourage, empower, and educate them. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Right now I'm living in Richmond, Virginia. And we have a great big following on Instagram and we hope that you take the time and a moment to really take a look at us and let us know what you think about our inspirational stories as well as our awareness campaigns. Great, thank you, Rachel. Uh, Raquel, excuse me. Uh, Paige, why don't you jump in? And Paige is an HIV and AIDS patient leader. Hi, everybody. Um, first, thank you for um, joining us tonight for this webinar. Um, so I was actually born HIV positive and I went through bullying in middle school uh, because I came out about my HIV status. And because of that, I have decided to be open about my HIV status and I go into schools educating others about HIV and AIDS and also advocating against bullying. And social media is a way that I definitely can connect with the youth especially um, when it comes to kind of getting them for HIV education and they share their own stories with me. So Instagram has been a big one where they use that direct message to kind of reach out to me. Yeah, it's definitely a good uh, platform to use when you're working with the youth completely. Um, and then Marla, let's hear a bit about you and your Down syndrome patient leader journey. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Marla Marasco. I am a Down syndrome mom advocate. My son was born 12 years ago, just celebrated a birthday last month. So I've been in the Down syndrome uh, advocacy world for 12 years now. Uh, some fun tips about me. I spoke at the United Nations uh, about two years ago for World Down Syndrome Day. Uh, actually was the winner for We Go Health, advocating for another award last year. And I go into schools and I speak to them about Down Syndrome and bring awareness uh, to the diagnosis so that basically people are aware of it, there's nothing to be afraid of, and just to in inspire people to um, you know, for inclusion, and that basically we're, we're all alike. So that's my, uh, my advocacy journey. And thank you for Regal Health for having us. 
Fantastic. So as you guys all just heard and saw that we have three really strong patient leaders here that are each in different communities, but they are all really strong leaders, either working with legislation or getting awareness out or having a corporation. Um, these are all leaders who are really taking, you know, the, the online platform by storm. So we want to jump into Instagram. I know that's what everyone's excited about. What's the best tips and everything. So let's get started. Um, and first, I want to see how do you guys use the platform for advocacy? Now, I know that could maybe be an open-ended question. So we're going to jump into more questions that'll answer it. But high level, how do you guys use the platform for your advocacy? So um, Paige, do you mind jumping in first? Didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but you're showing up first in the, the layer of okay. A little layer there. <laughs> so for me, Instagram is a big one, especially after I go into schools. The kids love taking the selfies and the pictures after I speak with them. And so when I share some of those pictures, I always am getting those direct messages or those comments on the pictures where, you know, kids are reaching out and a lot of times they feel a lot more comfortable asking certain questions through Instagram rather than raising their hand during question and answer when all their classmates and teachers are around. So that's a big one. And so just posting, you know, different quotes and different things about, you know, my daily life, you know, going to the doctor and things like that to kind of show people just because I was born HIV positive, I'm a normal person. And, you know, it's now something that you can live a normal life with. Yeah, and I imagine with something that does hold so much stigma that the DM level allows kids who maybe are, you know, like you said, excited about the posted pictures, they just got tagged with someone who spoke with them, and that kind of allows that element to have that conversation where it's removed, not so much that it's in front of everyone, and it's yes. more, more approachable. Yeah, exactly. Agreed, yeah. Marla, and how do you use your the platform for your advocacy? Sure. So what I found with Instagram is that I'm, I'm building my community with real genuine connections with people. And it's, again, it's an awareness thing for me to be able to share my story as a mom of a child with a disability and then share uh, Jacob's journey uh, with Down syndrome. And I use that to, um, again, bring awareness and educate people. And I use it basically to, um, again, you know, to build awareness, but I use like the hashtags and that way I get a greater reach within my community so that I can start building my followers. Yes, that's definitely very important when it comes to that. And we will jump into more about that because I know that's always on my brain is how to get more followers. And then Raquel, um, would you mind answering how you use the platform for advocacy? Um, I actually used it from the moment I was diagnosed with you with lupus until this very moment. Um, I had no connection to anybody that knew about lupus, knew what it was, other than my doctors who were calling me a fascinoma because they didn't know as well. So I really use it to reach out to people all over the world and connect with them um, and give them some type of inspiration and some education if they don't understand or don't know what's going on with their bodies. I really use that to advocate to them and to others to reach out to them in their, in their areas to get what they need and get the information and the inspiration and encouragement that they need. Yeah, and, and before this call, we were just talking about how sometimes technology is a little frustrating, but it, <laughs> it is times like that where I think we are grateful for this social media because it does allow that connection. And like you said, you're able to reach a global audience from this point once you're, you know, just on Instagram, you can reach anyone from across the world. Absolutely. So definitely agree with that. And and overall, we kind of all have this same thing. We're using these platforms to get our words out, to get our voices out, to share awareness. So now we're going to get into how we specifically do that. And the first question I have is something that I think about a lot, and it's how much do you determine, do you determine to split your feed? So do you share your personal life or do you have a completely separate account? And if you have one account, is it 50-50? Are you showing you know, your entire life or are you showing just your advocacy? life. I know that's something that a lot of our patient leaders ask frequently. Should I be splitting the, the accounts up and have my own personal one? And I think it's generally what works for you, but I do like to hear um, people's opinions. So let's switch it around and we'll start with Marla first. Keep everyone on their toes. Sure. Um, so basically it's a creative balance. 
um, quite honestly. So you want to be genuine. You want to be able to, to share your real life story. So I, I do have a personal account. Um, and I do on my business account, which is DS Mom Advocate, I do bring in some of the personal. I do bring in my son, Jacob, um, on the Instagram. Um, but I don't think you can, you, you have to share some of your personal in order to um, gain your followers trust. So mm -hmm. I, I do think you have to share a little bit about yourself um, with, re with regards to, you know, your audience, just because you need to gain their trust if you want them to follow you. Right. And, and I always think when I'm going through my feed, what do I relate more to? And it's when I know there's a person behind the account and that there's a face that I can put that to. So I, I definitely get that. Um, Paige, how about you? What are your thoughts? Do you think that there's a certain ratio that you follow or you choose to share just specifically advocacy? What are your thoughts? I've actually gone back and forth a lot. Like, should I, cause mine actually right now, it's all, everything's on one. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like a big part of that is when I first started, I was 14 years old. So for me, like I kind of built on everything, whereas my friends and, you know, classmates and, you know, parents of some of my friends, they like to see my, you know, school visits and those things right. as well. So and family members. So it's, it, it's kind of always been hard for me to like switch it to just personal and that. Cause then I'd be posting a lot of the same stuff twice. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, at that point, I've just kind of kept it as one and, um, just kind of keep that, you know, balance of, you know, this much personal. And then like a lot of, you know, most school visits, I post those all the time and camp stuff as well. Um, so it's just more kind of, I balance out the personal stuff that I put on the Instagram. Now, I know that you said that you came out about your HIV status early on. I think you said in middle school or something like that. Yeah. And then you wrote a book by like high school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I have a question that, you know, maybe someone who's feeling uncomfortable to come out in their um, condition or their disorder, would you advise them to maybe make that separate account then? Like, I know that maybe IG in the time that you were coming out, kind of, you didn't have to maybe face that decision, but in someone who is facing that and maybe a more, I don't want to use the word embarrassing, but maybe something they're not completely ready to come out with to maybe their friends and family, but they're ready to advocate for it. Do you have any advice for people like that? I think at that point, um, you know, it's also a very personal preference as well. Um, and it, it's always, you need to be ready to know like how open you are willing to be. And so that's a big thing. Like once you kind of open it up, you can't really go back, especially when it comes to social media. Yes. So it's something you really have to kind of prepare yourself for. Um, but there's also, I mean, like how you can set your accounts to a private. And so you can start letting in, you know, little by little certain family members or certain friends in that private account for your advocacy work and, you know, see how it goes. And then once you get to that comfortable point, you can always open it up to a public account. My stuff used to be on private just because there were, you know, those bullies and stuff that would go and post things on my account. Yeah. So, and now I've gotten to the point where everything's public. And at this point, I feel like I have so many other followers that if some people were to say negative things, like yeah, I wouldn't time. even have to address it. So mine's all public now because I'm at that point. So. Right. Yeah. No time for the haters when you're a patient leader doing big things. <laughs> all right, Raquel. And how about you? Do you have a certain ratio of splitting or are you just all for whatever you feel like posting? Um, I actually do have two separate accounts. Um, okay. I do uh, give personal information on my um, Lupus and Color account, but I minimize that because of the wide range of people that I reach through that account. Um, mm -hmm. So I have to be really careful. I've had some situations where people that aren't really Lupus survivors or Lupus warriors have come to things and they don't have good intentions. Mm -hmm. So I try and keep those things a little separate. Um, I do double up certain things about lupus advocacy on my personal account. Um, and I do show a lot of my personal runs with lupus as far as getting infusions every month or as far as going to the doctor. I do show that on my Instagram account so that they can see that, you know, lupus in color is not just a name. It's actually a person nice. that suffers and, and has their same situation um, and is fighting the battle with them. So I do share about 50-50. Um, with yeah. both. So I think the the overall consensus is do what you feel, 
but maybe there's kind of a point where you get to feel open and comfortable sharing. But of course, safety is always our number one thing. So we don't want to give out any personal information. And if you need a separate account to keep you safe, then I would vote for that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so now I want to get a bit about into why is this your primary platform and maybe why do you use it? So maybe even if it's not your primary platform for advocacy, What's kind of the differentiator that makes Instagram kind of your favorite or go-to? Um, Paige, we'll jump back to you. Um, so when it comes to Instagram, that's when it comes to youth, they're very more into Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat. Whereas I reach more family members and teachers and librarians and stuff through Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, they're my big, like, I don't really see a lot of students that I speak to trying to message me on Facebook anymore. That's very rare. Um, <laughs> it's definitely the direct message on Instagram and Twitter that they reach out to me. So Instagram is for sure where I post the pictures. Kids are like, well, you're going to tag me on Instagram or you're going to like post. And I'm like, well, if you send it and follow me and then I can see who you are and I can tag you. So when it comes to like the youth in schools and campers as well, um, the camp I go to, it's for kids and teens who are infected or affected by HIV AIDS. And so I've connected with them because we're all over the country through Instagram and Snapchat and it's big ones for them just because we're all so separate and we only can see each other once right. a year. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, Marla, what about you? Well, Instagram is is growing daily. I think we all know that, and I think that's why it's it's an important platform to consider um, when you are doing your advocacy. Um, for me, I think you know what I understand from my audience, just because I have asked questions, is they want the real life. They actually want to come with us. They, they want to see, uh, honestly, when my son and I are sitting there just um, making uh, popcorn or making pizza, I mean, they want that real life um, scenario because I think then it becomes more relatable. And, you know, we're, we are a visual world. So, you know, as Raquel, you know, had mentioned, you know, bringing people with you when you go for your transfusions, I mean, that helps people to realize they're not the only person, you know? And, and I think that's what's really important is that you, you want to bring people into your world because you want to be able to support them. I mean, that's really what we're, we're here doing from an advocacy perspective is to let people know they're not the only one. You know, we are walking the same walk you are. It may be a little bit d different than yours, but we're all walking the same walk. And people want to see that in real life so they have a connection with you. Um, you know, they don't live down the streets. So they can't come to your door. But when you bring them into your world, they feel like they're sitting right there with you. Yes, um, completely. And I, I think that's kind of been my favorite part, especially as we do see more and more patient leaders transforming um, their advocacy and adding it to Instagram now. It's been really cool because despite all these condition areas, it time and time again proves how much patient leaders we really do all go through similar things. And I think that's kind of like one of the keys that keeps us linked together as a whole patient leader network. So I, I do love looking at that. Um, but I do want to get into, I know we talked a bit about personal versus advocacy posts, but when it comes to the actual posts you guys are posting, how do you choose what to post? Is it images? Is it videos? Like what do you get the most engagement on? What do you enjoy posting most? Do you um, have a preference of it? Is there some special um, equation of video, video, picture, video, video, picture? I know, I've heard like all of it. And so I just want, what is what do you guys have for thoughts? So Raquel, how don't we start with you? Um, whatever comes to my mind is what I post. Love um, that. <laughs> what I might be feeling, someone else is feeling the exact same thing at the exact mm -hmm. same time. And I found that if you let them know, I know how you feel, even though I'm not there with you, that lets them know that you're in the fight with them. It lets them know that they are not alone. Some people, especially with lupus, they don't have a clue as to what lupus is. The people that they're dealing with day to day have no clue. They think that they're faking it. And sometimes just putting down, it's been a hard day and I just wanna scream. When I feel that way, helps them get through the moment. A lot of times I'll use Instagram. I started using Instagram later on because I really um, started on Facebook mm -hmm. but I started using Instagram later on my son told me you can reach so many more people if you use Instagram 
So I said, okay, let me get on Instagram. And he was so totally right. I mean, you can reach so many people from so many different walks of life that are ready to find the support that they don't have in their town online. So I really just say what's on my mind. I let them know that they're not alone. And if I have a funny thought, I'll make a video so that I can show it to them because people need to laugh when, they're having, when they have a condition that they're dealing with. So whatever's on my mind, I post, I don't hold back, I curse, I pray, I do what I need to do to get to the person and let them know you're not alone. Yeah, but it's transparency. That's exactly it. Absolutely. And it, you said you nailed it when you said, if I'm feeling it, someone else is feeling it. I 100% support that. No matter what you're feeling, there is most likely another patient out there. So transparency is always a win. And clearly, it's getting you places with your Instagram account. So keep <laughs> posting what you feel like. <laughs> um, Marla, how about you? Do you have any preference over images versus videos? Do you have a special ratio or anything like that? Um, I don't have a special ratio. I do, you know, because it is a business account, I do go into my insights and I look to see um, what people are connecting with. And it's really a little bit of both. It really depends. I mean, honestly, if I have my son in the video with me and we're doing homework or I don't know, whatever, we're, we're at a doctor's visit for him, um, they're there, they're with him. So it really is, it, it, like Raquel said, it depends on the day, it depends on the message I'm trying to get across. Um, because I also use, you know, with the visuals, it's really, Instagram is really like a mini blog. I mean, you can basically use that and there's no like, what, Twitter is 144, I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, you know, <laughs> but the point is, you know, you can you can tell a lot in, in you know, in the, the description part of it and even if you want to drive people back to your website or whatever your Facebook page I mean there's a lot to talk about so for me it's really 50-50 it depends on the message I'm trying to get across especially with the graphics if I have like a call to action and I think uh, you know I had talked to you about the Marla's mentions if I'm doing that where I have a call to action for somebody um, where I'm celebrating each Wednesday I celebrate a uh, a community, a, a nonprofit, or a teacher, or a business that is giving back to the disability community. Every Wednesday, I do a Marla's mention, and I and I shine the light on them. And I, I consider that uh, you know one mention towards you know just bringing greater awareness to the disability community. But I use that really as a graphic, um, and I'm getting I'm getting a lot of really good response. I'm getting a lot of followers from that as well. So it really depends on the message, um, but. It's really 50-50. They love the pictures, of, they love the videos of Jacob, but then they connect when I, you know, I'm using a really nice graphic, mm -hmm. but I'm telling a story behind that graphic. Right. So it's not maybe just the overall graph. I think the videos do paint the whole picture, bring them there, and then there's yeah. a graphic that separates it, which Correct. I say I love the videos of Jacob and I always <laughs> <laughs> um, the sweetest guy. Um, so then Paige, let's jump into you. But uh, Marla, you did bring up some good points that I'm going to jump back to you for, but I don't want to skip Paige. So for me, I, I, I'm kind of the same way as Marla and Raquel. I'm, it's whatever I'm feeling that day. Like, am I, I'm a big one where like, I actually like to post like just quotes, like in between, like some, like so many photos or so, like I don't have like a certain number. I'm like, Oh, I posted three pictures. I need to post a quote. Yeah. But like, you know, like <laughs> one of those, you know, maybe like I'm having a bad day or like, it's one of those things where like someone said something that I'm like, wow, like I'll go and find, um, like that quote. There is one thing where like, I am picky on my Instagram about, I have like all my pictures. If they're like, not the full square. I have them mm. with a white background. <laughs> and I then, do that, yeah. So, like, I've kind of had a pattern, but I have not haven't always been that way. Like, it kind of is just in the last, like, year or two. Like, I'm like, oh, this kind of looks good. And so I've kind of just kept that pattern. But other than that, I mean, it's – or if, like, when I'm at camp, I'll post, like, at least an update, like, every day with a picture of, you know, what we've done that day with the kids or the school visit because I have – know so many pictures with the kids at the schools they're like oh well you have to post this one this one so yeah, of it's just yeah whatever is going on that day or week and my life yeah well again across the board it's all transparency and I think 
as even as I was starting my patient leader journey, I think it's so easy to overthink your feed and what you're posting and you could sit there for weeks oh, yeah. <laughs> rearranging and rethinking. <laughs> and really the, the lesson here is that until you do it, nothing's going to happen. So you just need to post, you know, you'll get a feel for it over time. And I think, you know, you brought up the white border thing. I remember like doing that. And then when I changed I had this anxiety because your whole account changes, but just, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, it changes the look, but I think it's just, you got to go for it at the end of the day, whatever you, you feel like you're posting, you'll see what your audience is engaging with and then you can make better decisions from there. Um, but you guys did bring up some good points. So Marla, you brought up analytics, which I think is a really important part. Um, so I know it's not offered with the personal account, Right. But can you tell us a little bit about the, you know, insights you can pull from the analytics or like why you find it beneficial to maybe upgrade to the business account? So you yeah, can so the business account, obviously, just like any ad analytics, just like on Facebook, you're going to find out what people are engaging, engaging with. Um, even like if you have like the polls, you can do polls. Um, you can see who's responded, you know. Um, so there are, you can get, you know, time of day, you know, the location. So you can actually even see who responded. Good thing, just so you guys know. <laughs> so you don't like something, I'm, I'm going to know it's you. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> But the, the point is, I think what, what I enjoy about it is not so much that kind of stuff, but again, really to find out what my members are, or what my followers are connecting with. And, you know, what's really good about um, the business account is that there is a lot you can, I mean, Instagram is updating every day with all of these new um, highlights and, and updates and, you know, if you start becoming a brand, if you will, I mean, there's a way to brand yourself, your colors, you can use, you know, all that's through like the third party, um, you know, Canva and Snap and all the other third party stuff that you can do with it. But um, I, I just think that, you know, it's, it's a different way to approach if you definitely want to start collaborating with brands. Um, if you want to start, you know, doing any kind of collaboration, really, it's better to have a, I think it's better to have a business account. I'm not telling everybody to jump into a business account at the moment because you do have to feel safe and you have to, you know, feel like you know what you're doing with regards to it. But I think that once you start getting a following and you start feeling comfortable and you really want to get out there as an advocate and have a brand or, or, you know, um, you know, I don't know if you, I mean, I call it a brand, but I think going to then a business account is probably the most beneficial for you because there's a lot more you can do with a brand, I mean, a business account. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think there's levels like that on most social medias, but right. I know that with Instagram, I know that it, analytics is really helpful. And a lot of leaders are looking at that for their credibility and building. But I would say for new Instagram people, a normal account's totally normal and, and, and a, good, a good start. And then maybe as you are getting forward with your, your advocacy work and you're getting more serious, maybe considering that business um, account is definitely something. The other thing I did want to tell everybody, I, I'll be honest with you, don't think you could do it on the personal account. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, when you're following some of these um, larger brands and it says swipe up, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do that unless you have 10,000 followers. And I do think that's with the business account. Raquel and Paige, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm only, I only think you can do that with the business account, but you do have to have 10,000 followers because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to have this swipe up feature. Yeah. Because then what you do is you hyperlink back to something, whether it be your Facebook page or your website, but you can't do that until you get 10,000 followers. So that's the only thing I don't really like. That's a lot of followers. That's a lot of followers. And I know, you know, Paige and Raquel, you guys are pretty close to, you know, I mean, I'm not, I like literally started my business I'm halfway. Not even <laughs> it's so it's so difficult and that's one of the things that people like about instagram oh my gosh you can get the swipe up yeah. and it is so very difficult. hard to really um do anything on a personal account that if you want to grow so absolutely i think you're right about the ten thousand followers and, and instagram can be funny it can be real funny so it's good to have the business account and have the analytics there for you to see you know exactly what's going on what are your followers liking mm -hmm. um what are they really connecting to and then you can sometimes pattern certain days for that 
you know, if someone is having a problem with uh, lupus fogs, uh, where you can't remember th things and things of that nature, and you see that that is really something in your analytics that is hitting really good, you start to do a little webinar like we're doing now right. to, to, to really address that because people are obviously really dealing with that issue. Um, so yeah, I love the swipe up. Can't wait to get it. I'll be happy one when day, I do. One day, one day. Yeah. I think, I think it is only business accounts. I, you guys are the it experts is. on Instagram, but yeah, I think it, it is almost business accounts. So you guys are um, dabbling into a few, a few things that I wanted to get into. One is definitely engagement. So what are your audiences engaged with? I know it's going to be different between every audience, every community, but is there any type of content or topic that you guys see the most engagement? And do you have any tips for engagement to increase the engagement? I guess I should pick someone to go. Marla, go first. <laughs> um, I'll be honest with you. I love Instagram stories. Uh, mm -hmm. I, again, I think that is a way to be able to, you know, again, it's, it's what, 15 seconds? <laughs> yeah. There are apps, obviously, that you can use to, to con continue your story. But I, I, I like it because you kind of end it with it. <laughs> and the person's going to want to, well, what, going. well, where is she going with this? You know, so it's kind of, and honestly, I don't do it strategically. <laughs> it just kind of cuts me off. Sometimes I do. <laughs> but um, I think I like stories. I think people are really engaging with the stories right now. But again, as I mentioned, you know, you have polls on there. Um, you can actually do hashtags, which are, are a great way to reach communities and, and engage through people like that. A lot of um, conferences are doing hashtags. If you use like the at mention, um, people are going to get notified and then they're, they're going to communicate with you. So a lot of people use the DMs and which is the direct messages, but you know, I'm probably going into way, way too much. But the point is, I think that if you can be a little bit strategic about the story, if there's a hashtag that you can use, if there is a, a, geo, a, a geo tag, you know, meaning like, you know, if, I, and if I'm in Boston, you know, hashtag Boston. I mean, there's a way that you're going to build your, your audience and get some sort of engagement. And I, I know people that where they're walking down the street and someone goes, oh my gosh, you're that person on Instagram. So it takes time. don't think you're going to do it tomorrow. And the worst thing you could do is buy engagement, mm. you know, buy the followers. Cause that's not, that's not realistic. That's not, um, genuine followers, people that are in your niche or in your advocacy arena. Um, but I think using some of those um, filters, filters are huge on Instagram and just, you know, kind of, you know, figuring out how you can use the stories to tell a story within a couple different stories, if you will. And I don't know if you guys know, but there's the highlights, you know, that is actually something that's going to be really cool for advocates. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever pulled it up on the profile, but you'll see like little circles and you can use that as highlights. Like, so for me, I do, um, you know, down syndrome or I'll do inclusion and you can then start, um, building your stories on highlights because we know that, you know, the stories go away after 24 hours. There is a way you can save them though. You just have to hit save and then you put them in your highlights and that's people will start engaging with your highlights. Yeah, and we actually at WeGo Health has started using highlights more, and that's something that easily is just we have a highlight. What is the WeGo Health network? What are the benefits? So it's a great way to maybe separate. If you're an advocate, you want to separate. These are the events I'm running. This is the campaign I'm running. So definitely the highlights are a great feature to start using as a patient advocate um, for sure. Uh, Raquel, I see you shaking your head. Do you have any ideas to add to that? Absolutely. I was, get, I was getting ready to jump in sooner or later. She was excited. I could see her. <laughs> what happens is that I, I, I don't use the, uh, the stories as much. I'm starting to use them now because I don't, I don't like that they go away, but it is a great way to engage people. Definitely agree with Marla on that one. It's a great way to engage people. And I love the highlights because like you stated, you can do your events you can do something that really stuck with you. Cause sometimes I'm posting stuff to encourage me <laughs> mm -hmm. as a warrior myself. It's, it's difficult sometimes to deal with the problems that you go through having lupus. So I want to keep that somewhere where it's close because I know if I'm dealing with it, 
they're going to have a good feeling from it as well. So I love the highlights on it. I, I, I love the whole story thing now. I'm getting used to videoing. This is all new to me. I, 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 re I really understand how my parents felt like when the VCR came out and they were like, what is this stuff? So I'm oh, feeling right. it now. But I'm trying to, you know, overcome all that and really get into doing the stories and engaging people at their level. Um, someone might make a response on something that you posted weeks ago. And, you know, sometimes you just scroll right through and you might not answer. But when you answer them, they're like, oh my gosh, she answered me. Or, you know, I can't believe that you actually are a person. So I do answer a lot of people on their comments and that helps the engagement to come even more. Yeah, I would say it's definitely, we say patient leader, number one, you, you have to engage with your community. We can't Absolutely. just be throwing information at them. They wanna feel like they can come to you as an individual, so really, responding, liking, commenting on every comment, but also maybe checking out a few other patient leaders within your community, going to their accounts, commenting on that. And I know tagging other patient leaders. I know Marley, you kind of talked about this, how each Wednesday you mentioned a nonprofit. I know a lot of patient leaders who will mention other patient leaders, whether in their community or not for tagging, which is a great way to, you know, of course, build the audience and further build the community, of course, as right. well. Absolutely, absolutely. And Paige, I want to give you a time to share. Um, do you have anything specifically that helps with engagement that you go to or use um, or do? Um, so for me, it's kind of going back to what Raquel was saying, interacting with some of the people that comment on some of my old posts. A lot of times the kids, they won't want to direct my, like message me directly. So they'll comment on a picture from a few months ago or a couple weeks ago to kind of have it a little hidden, but they, I still know like, Oh, I remember that kid from meeting them yesterday or today. And, um, a big thing, there's a, some of the kids that I, that will come up to me afterwards and speak with me directly. I'm a big one. And when they find me on social media, I like to follow them back. Mm -hmm. And so they get super excited and they're do the kind of the same thing Raquel was saying where they're like, I cannot believe you commented back or you responded or you followed me back. So that's a big thing that kids get really excited for, and I know it makes them interact more as well and kind of keeps their head more in the game and, like, listening a little bit more. So interacting kind of in that way and staying engaged with not only, you know, what you're involved in and what people are saying about you, but also, you know, what those people who are following you, like, what they're involved in and kind of how they're doing in their own, you know, whether it's a health thing or whether they're going through something as well. Yeah. I, def I definitely agree with you, Paige, as to, you know, what they're going through and, you know, how are you doing? And Right, exactly. It's so helpful. I love the way, I love the way you stated that. Awesome. Well, and, you know, don't, don't forget to, to actually, like, when you do a comment or a direct message, if you did it in a video, oh my gosh, that's huge. I personally I mean, made to get into stories. But well, what was that page? I need to get into the stories. I'm I'm still in that youth where I'm using Snapchat where I need to get into the Instagram story. I, I, even in the learn. comments though, or if you direct if someone you know messages you and you can direct message them back, hey, thanks for the follow. Hope you're having a great day. I mean, that's huge. But if you actually do that on a quick video instead of typing it. Again, to your point, Paige, they're going to remember that. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's a real person. She actually just said, I hope you're having a great day. Yes. I know. I think my month would be made if someone did that. I'd be like, woo, I'm famous. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so definitely. I think any way that you can make them feel special is only going to help them stay engaged with you. I mean, they're people just have more patience and we want to feel like important. They kind of feel the same way, right? So um, definitely going to make them feel important, engage with the followers. But I do want to talk a little bit when we get into the blurred lines of other platforms. So we have our Instagram platform. Are you guys posting everything you post on Instagram on maybe your Facebook or your blog or your Twitter, or is this strictly your Instagram content stays on Instagram? What are your thoughts on that? I know some people post the same thing on all channels. Some people don't, they post different on them. So what are your thoughts? Um, I actually, I actually post, um, things on all channels pretty much the same. The good thing about it though, is that sometimes I'll post a little less on Instagram because you don't have but so much. 
and direct them to Facebook so that they know sometimes you're going to get more at a Facebook page or on my blog or on the website. And that's how you keep them engaged as well. Oh, if you go to my website, you'll be able to win this. Or if you go to my website, you'll be able to find more information, more links and things that can help you. So I do, most of the stuff is triple, quadruple posted. <laughs> um, but not as much on the smaller platforms like Twitter, uh, uh, Instagram, because you don't have as many characters. Because right. I can get a little winded. So <laughs> Facebook is good for me because I'm older, and it also helps because I can write a lot. So right. well, <laughs> I always say like Instagram is like the millennials' new blog because we're too lazy right. to actually read a full blog. <laughs> but at least with the Instagram, we get the picture in like a four a four hundred word easy. Right. Picture. Um, but you did mention links, which is something also that's really important. I know at WeGo Health, we use Linktree. So by putting that in our bio, um, because you know, you can't have your links in your bio unless I think it's a business profile. Um, Linktree is a great app to have that can lead your um, followers back to multiple links. So I know that um, we have a bunch of tools for you guys, all the audience in our tip sheet that we will share. So don't worry, all the specifics of all the apps that these hosts have shared with me over the last week. Um, we've got those in um, the tip sheet for you. Kristen, I actually want to share one more that I actually been using. And if any of you do go to my um, profile, it's, it's, I'll put it in the chat, but it's links in bio. And what I like about that is you can actually brand yourself. So basically like on Linktree, what is it like a colored background or something? Mm -hmm. I actually have a picture of my family. Oh, and it's, it's actually really cool. Same, and I have my links in there, which would say Facebook page, my website. So actually what I did was I actually took the, um, link from this registration from the webinar. And I said, if you guys want to follow us on the, on the webinar, check out the, the link in my profile. And on the very top was the, we go health webinar link. Yeah. So I'll put that in there because I just found that one out. And I love that one because you can brand it any way you want. So I like literally have a picture of my family in the background. Oh, wow. All yeah. right. Learning new things every day. Thank <laughs> you. That's why we got each other. Um, all right, Marla, why don't you, do you um, cross post uh, against channels or what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I definitely do. And I've been doing it probably a lot more because there is obviously a way you can save your Instagram stories. You can, you can go up and you can get the copy of the, um, the URL that's on the Instagram from your post. And you can actually then drive traffic back to your Instagram um, business account or profile, whatever you want to do. Um, if you want to obviously build your following. So at, like Raquel said, there's only so much um, you can put in Twitter. You know, you can use the link shortener, the bitlies and, and all that. But um, I definitely have been doing it a lot more, especially on LinkedIn. I have actually um, neglected LinkedIn a little bit, but I find myself taking some of my really good um, posts and then posting them up on LinkedIn. So yes, I have been doing a lot more cross cross posting of the social media platforms. Yeah, and LinkedIn's a good one because I don't think everyone always takes advantage of that, but that's a great place to get your your work seen. Um, and then Paige, how about you? Do you cross, I keep saying cross contaminate, but I mean <laughs> cross post. <laughs> uh, so I'm a big one with the Instagram stuff. I will post to, tw I'll share it to Twitter. And so on Twitter, it'll just say like, I'll just do the little share button like on Instagram where it'll just like kind of put like, Oh, on Twitter, like, Hey, she posted a picture on Instagram and it'll show a little bit of the caption, which will then lead them to my Instagram. So then they have to go follow me on both. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll do the kind of the same thing as Raquel was saying, where I'll post something on Instagram and then share it onto Facebook, but I will add a bunch more onto Facebook because you have that more space and it's kind of a bigger, and I totally agree with you about like the more like our age is a big one with, we don't really, I've always been saying I need to make a blog, but I would post my long stuff on Facebook anyways. And I'm like, everyone that's going to read my blog reads it on Facebook. So I'm a big one with sharing the Instagram to Twitter, but then I use my Facebook for when I want to kind of express more of those posts. Yeah. yeah. Great. Wow. I feel like we've learned 
so much tonight. I have one more question, but I just want to give everyone that's watching tonight just a few moments. If you do have any questions, we'll be jumping to those in the next few moments. So please um, throw those in the chat box. But this is something um, that I think is very important to talk about when we talk about Instagram. But how do you limit your time on it? Because I know that Instagram is something, especially for me, that plays into my mental health. Um, so do you guys have any struggles with making sure that you are maybe not spending all day on Instagram, even if it's not for advocacy? Um, do you have any tricks or any um, you know, self-routines where you make sure you only spend a lot of time on Instagram or whatnot? I limit myself to five posts. <laughs> and if I have to do more, I do it very briefly. But you can be very consumed. Yes. Um, helping others and not helping yourself. And it's very easy to do that on social media. So if I'm going over five posts, it's probably because I'm going through something and I really need to take a break anyway. So I do put the phone down a little bit even though my family will tell you different, <laughs> it probably seems like it's always in my hand. It's like an extension of my fingers. But I do about five or six posts a day because I don't want to overwhelm people mm -hmm. and I don't want to overwhelm myself. And when I first started, it was like a young lady stated that you are posting way too much. And I took that and ran with it. I was like, oh, I, understand. <laughs> I get it. But I do try and limit myself to about five posts per day. And if I have more to share, I just hold on to it. I really try to hold on to it and take a break. Because if you don't take a break, you will be consumed by the social media. You will think that you're like this social media hype, as the young kids say. <laughs> um, and it's really about helping others through that uh, medium. But it's also about helping yourself. So mm -hmm. you really have to be careful and limit your time and limit how much you can even really share. You can't share everything. Right. Um, but right. you need to share enough so that people understand that they're not alone. Well, self-care is number one. We can never help other patients if we're not putting our first. So yes, totally yeah. true with that. The other thing I would say to that is that um, don't ask for notifications when people go Because <laughs> I'm literally looking down and so-and-so went live. So, and then I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, you know, you can't, I mean, you can totally get consumed in it. Um, but I think, you know, again, I, and I, I, you know, I come at this a little bit more from a business perspective. So some of it is planned out and scheduled. Um, and I have been starting to use, which I absolutely love, an app called Planoly. And you just like any other social, social media post, you can start scheduling. So you're not literally sitting there going, oh, I got to post right now. I got to post right now. You can really strategically start doing that. But again, if you're doing stories in real life, you can't. Um, but, well, actually you can. But, you know, if you want to be in the moment, I would just, I, I would limit yourself, you know, and then, you know, really just make if you're going to go on and do that, I would maybe do a time block. This half hour is just dedicated to whatever. If it's Instagram or Facebook, maybe it's just social media. And then not only posting, but to Raquel's point and Paige's point, um, commenting and liking and following. Again, that's all about building engagement. So even though you may not be posting, spend some time in there just kind of giving true comments not like oh that's nice or hey i really you know i really appreciated your story made me happy today or something a little bit more so that people can actually see this isn't like a bot or whatever they call right. those things where people pay for people to just yeah. go hi yeah <laughs> it's like, genuine hi. <laughs> right yeah. you know but i mean really using your time wisely to be again strategic about either posting or engaging Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Paige, do you have anything to add in here before we wrap up? I think it's funny because I remember at We Go Health Awards saying, like my mom's always said, like, you should post more on Instagram. You should post more on this. And so I feel like I, I'm one of the friends or youth, I feel like that, like, I could be more on social media. Like, I'm not actually one to like, constantly be on my phone or be on social media like that so it's kind of funny that like I'm actually kind of the opposite where like I should probably be on there more um but when it comes to I feel like 
I noticed myself wanting to be on there more for sharing like the school stuff and the camp stuff and communicating with other patients or other people going through the same thing than I see myself really wanting to be on there for personal stuff anyway. So I think I'm like the opposite of you guys. I did for you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Christine, can I just make one quick yes. suggestion to yeah, both Kate and, and Raquel and anybody listening? And, and ladies, you may do this, and I apologize because I don't know the answer if you would do. Um, I would definitely create a hashtag for yourself. Oh, I yeah. Definitely create a hashtag and start using that in your posts. And then you can actually follow your own hashtag, or you can tell people to follow your hashtag. Absolutely. I mean, Oh, oh, like to just that. click it, like the hashtag, yeah. to see what's going on. Yeah. So, like for me, I use the hashtag DS Mom Advocate, or um, I use I have my own personal hashtag. You know, our love and then for Down syndrome, and those are like my own personal hashtags that I actually curate stuff in and I can actually use that information and tell people to go back to it. So if you are really like looking to do an advocacy journey, think about your own personal hashtag, you know, go on, make sure it's not used. You know, you can do that in, I don't know, hashtag.org or something like that. But I find it really interesting following the hashtags because I had posted something the other day and I'm still ranking in the top um, post on that, in that hashtag. So yes. don't, don't forget about the hashtags because they are really critical. And I think you can use, ugh, I don't know the number. I want to say 11. Yeah. No, I, think, I think it's a little bit more than that, but you can even put hashtags in your comments. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good point. And it's a good point in branding. Um, yeah. Like I use hashtag lupus and color, but I also have a, a brand to us and that is in educate, inspire, encourage, empower. And when people see that they know that's lupus and color. So they know that the hashtag is lupus and color. If you follow that, that lupus and color hashtag, you'll see everybody, you know, tagging us as well. Very good point. Hashtagging is very important. As long as it's not a whole big sentence. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> because I people agree. have so much, you know, you know, visual time to look right. at them, but And the other thing too, just from a visual perspective is, you know, we all use those, those emojis, right? So my emoji, which I just learned the other day is after all of my posts, because my emoji is the butterfly. So after all the things that I post or comment, I'm always going to put that butterfly now because people then to the branding point, Raquel, are going to realize, oh, that's Down Syndrome Mom Advocate because it's the oh, butterfly. That's know? a great idea. I like that one. And I know um, with the hashtags, if people are look, I know in the chat, people are looking ideas for um, hashtags to do. You can follow hashtags now. So if you type in a hashtag, you know, hashtag mental health, I can follow the hashtag of mental health. And throughout my feed, there will now be people that aren't my friends that are posting about mental health. So that could just be a great idea to maybe get the, the creative juices flowing. And I do want to make a correction that Aaron in our chat group is saying that you can actually use 30 hashtags um not my incorrect 11 so yeah <laughs> this is why we've got the experts on the call and it's not me hosting this <laughs> But I do want to say thank you all. You guys provided some tremendous feedback and insights. Um, thank you everyone who attended tonight. We will be sending you each um, the Instagram tip sheet that I promised earlier that is compiled of all the tips you hear, heard here tonight and more. Um, for a recap of this blog, we'll also or a recap of this webinar, excuse me, we'll also be posting this on our blog next week. So be on the lookout for that. And other than that, if you guys have any questions in the next few days that you'd like to ask one of these hosts tonight, please feel free to email me and I will shoot them your questions. But other than that, I want to say thank you so much and I hope you all have a lovely night. Again, Paige, Marla, Raquel, thank you so much for joining us for another Patient Leader webinar and I will talk to you all soon. Thank, Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, ladies.